Camp Talkwitz, owned by the Long Beach Area Council. There's the pool. There's the meadow. Our campsite is over there. We get campsite 17. Tall trees. Busy day at Talkwitz. Everybody's checking in. It's Sunday. Check in Sunday, check out on Saturday. Mike's trail. <laughs> he must have built it. This is the pool area. Pretty nice. I'm here at Camp Talkwitz and it's the first morning. We spent the night last night. I was with the troop helping to support it. I just wanted to share a little bit of the Talkwitz experience because this is my first time. I've been in uh, committee meetings and stuff where I, we talk about it, but um, this is my first time up here and uh, very nice. Um, here's why I spent the night. We slung a hammock between these two trees and I think it's supposed to be a shared hammock, but for these two days it'll be mine. And there's the tent. It's a backpacking tent that the troop owns that I borrowed. And um, frankly, I'm not even using it right now, but one other parent will come behind me. They'll probably fix the setup and then they will um, occupy it. And that's how it goes. The parents split the task of helping out. And um, pretty nice. I wanted to show some of the things that the unit does because um, I don't get a chance to spend time with it sometimes. And um, just a little bit about um, scout life while they're here in Talkwitz. Because it's the uh, mountains, you have to have some fire safety. So you fill a can with dirt and you fill a can with water and it stands outside each tent just so that you have your own uh, fire station. The medic came by to visit and uh, they've got a fire warden. But this is, um, so some of these tents are personally owned, some are owned by the unit. Mine got destroyed on one of the campouts, so I'm working on barred tents right now. This is the flag stand and the um, the American flag, the California flag, and each of the uh, patrols, um, cobras, the boys organize into patrols, and they self-monitor wolverines. They make their flags, maybe obvious. I don't know what that is, the elks, stags, lightning bolts, I guess. Ta -da. Ta -da. So they all know, the roadrunners, so they all know that they um, are represented by their flags when coming up here, they, uh, help to bring everything out, pack the um, van, and put their patrol boxes, their um, kitchen items, in. and uh, they're doing all the cooking and all of the uh, cleaning up afterwards. Parents do nothing. Well, they watch. They eat. There's the uh, unit tents. So these tents are all owned by the unit. In some units you have to bring your own tent, but we're lucky enough that our unit has over time, it's an old unit, and it has over time acquired quite a bit of uh, inventory. There are two food options. One is to just eat at the commissary, and it's all served like a cafeteria. The other is they'll bring you your food and the unit will cook it, and we prefer to go that way because our unit, um, you know, that's one of the things that the boys do while they're at camp. So they bring the food here, we leave the empty ice chests, and they um, bring it and put it in in the morning, or, and you get the entire day's food and we put the trash out here also. So um, I learned something this morning which is when that bugle sounds then you wake up because that's breakfast. And I didn't get up when the breakfast call happened. The hammock was very comfy. Uh, so I had cereal. But at least it was something. <laughs> this is the parking lot. When you're parking up into the mountains, in the mountains, they um, require that you park with your car facing out. So you'll notice that all of these have backed in and every 
car is ready for the escape because you never know what's going to happen when you um, when you have a fire so just make it as easy and convenient as possible for an orderly emergency evacuation Lake Wrangler Shooting Sports Health Lodge okay this is the lodge over at Camp Talquets and I'm not sure what it's used for but it's a pretty sizable, you're just seeing it from one angle right now, and uh, I think there's a college that also uses it. Shotgun, rifle, lake, shooting range, uh, archery, one well-used target. This is the shooting sports cabin, and this is where you'd be doing shotgun, although I don't know how you'd do it or where exactly you'd be shooting to. Safety rules. So you know where you are. Shotgun. That is the wall. And in front of the wall you see a clay pigeon launcher. And those pigeons are launched and shot at from the shooters will stand at the um, the base on both metal pads, oh, the concrete pads, and they'll shoot over in that direction. Downhill, it's all marked off, and it's pretty rugged terrain, so there's there are no safety issues with uh, unused ammunition coming down. If there was shooting in this direction, it leads to wrangling. This is the wrangling area. Somebody just came back with a horse. There are a couple more horses over there. One of three in the corral. Uh, pretty good capacity they have. I took horseback riding once. It was not pretty. <laughs> There's a sleepy horse for you. Interesting looking trough. Another one over there. Say hi for the camera. Wrangler area, you can head off on the Ranger Trail, but I won't go back. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six cabins up here, and uh, I think that they can be rented out. I'm not sure exactly when. You'd have to contact the, con the council to do that. Here's another view of the lodge, so you can see that it's uh, pretty sizable. This is the rifle range. They're getting instructions. Now this is very interesting to me. This is the entrance to Camp Tacoma. And what do we see here? It says Will Jerry Scout Reservation. So I wonder if the same group that sponsored the Will Jerry Scout Park in Long Beach is the one that provided the funding for Camp Tacoma. Cool. Tacoma Bowl. Erected by the tribe of Tokwit and dedicated to the memory of C. L. Appling, born April 3rd, 1890, died February 4th, 1960. He was dedicated to the use of the Long Beach area. And I wonder if they actually ring and have my stone. Okay, cool. In honor of Herb Booth, Roger Reed, and Tokwit Camp Ranger. 1972 to 93, dedicated to the scout camping program. Tribe of Tarquitz, founded 1925, in memory of Harold W. Arnold, Long Beach Area Council Scout Executive, 1955 to 72. His vision brought Tarquitz to Barton Flats. Area Council, founded 1919. 
and in honor of William E. Baker, a devoted builder of Talkwitz from Wilderness and of men from boys. And so, this is Talkwitz Bowl, and they do activities here at night um, with uh, skits and things like that. We were here yesterday. Got to keep the mulch on to uh, keep the dust down. So this is the commissary, commissary, and here's the entrance line. You come in here, and you go through the line, and there is where you'll have your food. It's pretty simple. I don't know if you can see that there. Just basically. <laughs> Coffee and chocolate. And then here's the, um, the line where you have your food. Right now there's no food set up, but that's pretty much it. Then you go through the exit. <laughs> here's where dessert will be set up. The Wall of Honor, Gary L. Johnson, Timothy E. Howes, Dominic Don Ipello, Randolph Richards, Edward Chapman, Robert Murray, Wiseman James W. DeLong, Wiseman, Terry Baker, Marty Robinson, Dr. Sutter E. Kunko, the Kiwanis Club of Long Beach, Long Beach Fire Department, Camp Medics since 1973, Bobby L. Gray, Scoutmaster, Trainer Tribe Advisor. They need a difference. Now there's the Miss Mama, if I ever saw one. It's called Internet Cafe. It's also where you can get the emergency electrical power cut off. There is no internet. Well, there is an ethernet cable, which we don't know if it provides internet, and we think not. You can, however, power your phone charger, which that's mine in there, the third on the right. And uh, there's no food in the internet cafe. So, no internet, no cafe, but power. So we're at Camp Talkwitz, and this is the meadow where the tiger bunnies and the lost raptors live. No one is permitted in the meadow and no one dares to go because if you do, you might not emerge because the tiger bunnies will get you. Around the edge, you can see there's some people on the trail. And so in that line of trees, you can go. And up there are the craft lodge, the outdoor skills lodge, there's the pool, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then over behind me, the commissary. And then up here is the nature center, and then back down there is our campsite. Of course I forgot to get the fire drill, the fire alarm going off, but we're doing the fire drill. Which is basically, to make sure we know what to do, we go to the parking lot and uh, gather in our units.
mindful of policy that proves beneficial to the tribe as a whole. This policy was the rule that we live by today, known as the Golden Rule. The tribe was a prosperous one, peaceful and friendly. Each night, the tribe would appoint two braves to tend to the fires. On a certain night, as was custom, two tribesmen were watching the fire. Both had been on a strenuous hunt that day, and consequently they were tired. Accidentally, the two fell asleep, letting the fires die out. When they awoke in the morning, there was nothing left but a bed of cold ashes. To the Indian tribe, fire was an absolute essential. It was used to cook the meat, keep warm on cold winter nights, to see by in the darkness. The loss of fire by an Indian tribe meant disaster. Soon without fire, the tribe, the tribe of the Santa Rosas began to falter. The chief of the tribe called a council of all the warriors and braves. morning. This is the view from the hammock. There's the hammock and there's the part of my sleeping bag. I'm up now, thinking that revelry should be happening soon and hoping to catch some of the bugler's sound. But it's very peaceful. Can't talk it. That's where we're going to be cooking breakfast. I'm looking forward to a hot breakfast cereal. It was good, but, you know, it's nice to have eggs when you're camping. Okay, that's revelry. We only got the tail end. But I think we got something pretty good. He got us a bugler. This is the um, trading post. So if you look at this, it's um, these buildings are at least 100 years old, I think. And, uh, well, okay, maybe they were established when Captopics was established, which I'll have to go and look and see when that was, because that makes sense. And uh, a little bit worse for wear, but holding up held together by duct tape. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi. And Alex is? The train bus manager. Very good. How long have you been working up here, Alex? Uh, this is actually my first summer. Oh, great. And um, it's, it's been really fun. Okay, great. <laughs> Are you a member of Tri? I am not, but um, I'm about to become an honorary member. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So we have trading posts, and it's a Barton Flat store. Yep. <laughs> you can buy your walking sticks bottle if you forgot one. This looks like it's an old kitchen box. Another style. I should do the one that we have down uh, down in the campsite. Camp talk with shirts, etc. And duct tape. Ooh. What a great price on colored duct tape. Two dollars. Wow. And a few bits of snacks. Here are some, um, I think these might be leather working kits. Oh, wooden kits. Oh, painting. Craft kits. Great, great, great. Annex. I think it's where they store the supplies. The zombies next one mile. And I think that's where the staff is. And that tent is a special tent, it says Commissioner. This is the craft hut, and this is where they craft. This is the view they have as they craft. The meadow. 
maybe a little bit of the pool. Pretty nice, huh? So I'm going to go inside because there's a whole bunch of cool stuff inside the craft hut. Craft Lodge. Lost Raptor Crossing. Craft Lodge. 1990. Is that old? Right there? Must have been something else before. I suspect they use it for crafting. No one cut lines. Beadwork. Laser cut work. A lot of American Indian culture. Another working tool. This is um, the craft lodge at Come Talk With. We just uh, took a photo of Pappy. He showed me this is like a 1905 structure around, and it was part of a ranch that existed here before Camp Talk With. And uh, in, 19, in the 1950s um, is about when Talk was established, and it became the craft lodge. And the craft is um, weaving so that you can make the seats of um, little stools. This is the outdoor skills area, and all of those ropes, you can bet, were tied by scouts or tribesmen. Take a look at them. Yeah, I looked online and uh, not tying a big deal. Three a in the rest outdoor skills, trail, first aid, camping, cooking, wilderness survival, and pioneering. Look at the size of these logs. I can put my hand in perspective. One, two, about three. Big step up. And uneven floor, but it's all fun. This is very awesome. This looks like it's a um, survival shelter. And uh, the boys learn how to make this. Oh. Pretty good. Well, I guess I could slide in there and take my sleeping bag. Looks like a beaver would have made it. Here's another one. This looks like a lean-to. 
if I were to think what a lean to might look like, this would be it. Here's another kind. This looks like a fort. Dude, I could so live in this. Nice. Oh my gosh. And basically it's used by doing these uh, woven just right around and then they do some sort of lashing in between. Which, goodness knows what that is. Maybe I'll get somebody to show me sometime. And here it is where it comes out and attaches to a big sturdy upright tree. So there's one tree, and this is right in the ground here, so there is another tree that it's lashed to, so two trees, hmm, this is pretty awesome because there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, wow. If we were like in the old days, this would be, um, you know, like the Anasazi Indians living in the hillside, except it's the, uh, you know, no uh, hillside to cut into, so you use what you got, which is like a bunch of, you know, tree branches and a bunch of, uh, uh, what do you call these? Uh, Things, needles from the pines. Look at that. Oh. And on this side, perfect. You don't even have to slide in and lie down. You can actually sit up. Look at this one. Oh my gosh, these are so cool. You look for the right shape of branch to go over the stabilizing branches that you have. And just so you know, I didn't take the class. I'm making this all up. Guess I'll have to take the class sometime. And this is the beginning for the other side of the house. The second room, I guess. Ooh, entrance. Looks pretty spacious in there. Let me see if I can get in. I don't know if this is going to take, so I'm going to move it around a bit. bit of me somewhere in there, I think. Here's a look at the inside. Cool. There's another shelter in the works, just like a beaver dam. You can't really tell that it was put there on purpose until you come around to this side. And you can see. Oh, cool. I can totally be under there. Here's another one. This one's sized for a whole family. Ah! Ooh, something stuck in my leg. Yikes. The beginnings of another. And over there, yet another. And another. And another. This one looks like a dinosaur. Okay, look at this. Pretty cool. I think this is the best so far. Or have I called the best one already? A little bit of air windows. I think this is my favorite area of all. Now I had known that my son had made these. Now I totally have an appreciation for it. Cool.